All right, so continuing from where I left off in the previous video, I'm going to take a look at uh, pandas inside of Visual, inside of Jupyter Notebook, inside of Visual Studio Code. And I've already got these line items and names. Now I'm going to use these to create something that's called a data frame. And if you've worked with R, you know a data frame is basically uh, a table, uh, for lack of a better term, but it's a tabular data structure and it's got a lot of uh, bells and whistles attached to it. So before I can do anything, I'm going to need to install pandas. So I can open up my terminal and say pip install pandas. With that done, I can now import pandas as pd. And this is a convention to alias pandas as pd. Data scientists are lazy, they don't like to type. All right, now I need to be able to create this data frame. And the data frame, there are many different ways you can create a data frame. I'm going to create one using a dictionary. Now recall that I've got these line items which are just floats and these names which are just strings from the previous video. So to create a data frame, and maybe we'll call it sales, and say pd.dataframe, and then inside of there I have this data keyword argument, and I'm going to create a dictionary. Now the keys of the dictionary will become column headers, and then the values for each of those keys will be a list, and that list will be the values in that column. So I'll start off and I'll say, uh, we'll just use the same uh, use the same variable names here, names for the key, and name the names list. And then we'll say line items is going to be the line items. All right. And now I can run the cell with your sales in it. And uh, it will show me, and it will show me the contents. Now, notice that because I'm running inside of a Jupyter notebook here, uh, I get some, I get some nice formatting. So it bolds the, um, it bolds the column headers, and it zebra stripes the, it zebra stripes the rows. And also, if I go to my variables down here, and I click on the, uh, on this icon here, which says show the variable in the data viewer, it'll open it up in a new window. And it gives me the ability to uh, say filter. So let's see here. We'll look for everything that's eight ninety nine. And there's all the ones that are eight ninety nine. Or we could find all the purchases that um, that Brooke made. So really, um, it's a really nice feature to be able to just explore your data instead of having to write code to actually do this. All right, keeping that in mind, let's take a look at some other things that we could do uh, with pandas inside of Visual Studio Code. So for example, maybe what I want to do is I want to find out what's the total amount that each customer purchased. So let's just take carry. Um, what I could do is I could say sales, and then if I want to access a particular column, I can access it by name. Names, it's going to be the column, and then I can say find me all of the column, find me all the rows where the column names is equal to carry, and the result actually may surprise you. Uh, what we're going to get back here actually is what looks like a list of bools. This is actually called a series, and a series in pandas is basically a list that has an index and that's this index over here that's automatically added. Now again notice that these are booleans. Now I can go on further and say sales such that sales names where the name is equal to carry and what's going to do is filter out all of the names where filter out all the rows rather where the names column is not equal to carry and return only those where it is 
So, and the nice thing about Jupyter Notebook, notice I retyped it that previous time. I don't have to do that. I could, I could just, I could just go back to the cell and continue editing this one, this this one cell. Um, I can also, so notice that this returns a data frame. So I could further dig down into that data frame as well and get the line items column. And then there's a method sum, which will, which will sum up all of the values. And now I can find out that carry purchased a total of $18.95. What if I want to do this for each of the customers? That's pretty easy. Um, what I could do is I could say for name in, and I want to get each unique name here. I don't want to get all of the names. I only want to get the unique names. And there's a way to do that. I could say sales names. And then there is a unique method. And then what I could do is I could say something like total equals, and actually I'm just going to copy and paste this. So names equals and name. Now I want to be able to save this somehow. So I'm going to create a dictionary. And I'll call this totals, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. And I actually could do this with a dictionary comprehension, but it might get a little bit messy. So I'll say totals name. Oops, actually that should not be in quotes. Equals total. Oh, and I've got a key error here. Ah, I see. Should have assigned. There we go. All right. So now if I go and look at totals, and there's some rounding errors there we'll ignore for now, but I can see the total of each one. See the total for each customer. So what if we want to turn this into a data frame? Now what I could do is I could just say df this time and say pd dot data frame and the data is going to be a dictionary and we'll say that the names are equal to uh, what do I call that totals I think yes totals dot keys and totals is going to be totals dot values and then now I have this in a data frame and if I wanted to save this there's a very nice two CSV function or yeah there's a very nice two CSV function uh, or actually method that is and I can give this a name totals dot CSV I could also specify what columns I want it to write if I don't if I leave this out it will uh, automatically use all of them but what I do want to do is I don't want it to include the index so I'm going to say index equals false and now you can see I've got a totals.csv over here if I open it there is there's all that data in a CSV and that's a little bit more about what you can do with pandas inside of Visual Studio Code.